Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin in The Marriage. With the conviction that marriage remains the most popular domestic arrangement between friendly people, NBC takes pleasure in presenting one of the most distinguished couples of the American theater, Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin as Liz and Ben Marriott, bringing you the love and laughter of the marriage. Change is a very important thing in marriage. It's difficult to put your finger on the exact moment when it becomes necessary for survival. That point when security degenerates into monotony. There are a number of danger signs to look out for. A sudden excessive use of garlic in the cooking. The discarding of a gray Homburg in favor of a light green pork pie. In the Marriott household now, the storm warnings weren't so clear... It started one night when Emily was on the telephone with a friend of hers, and Liz and I were in the living room trying not to listen. Oh, but Ellie, I'll die. I'll I'll absolutely die. Oh, no. Sounds critical, doesn't it? Shh, Ben, she'll hear you. But I've already got a date. Oh, Ellie, I'll die. Huh? Then what'll I tell Bobby? Again? (laughs) Then what can I tell Arthur? (laughs) Well, I can't tell them the same thing. They're both on the basketball team. You know how boys are in the locker room. Liz, how are boys in the locker room? Now, Ben, that's not fair. But that's devastating. Catastrophic. What adjectives would those kids have left if they had to describe an earthquake? Every little crisis is the end of the world. Shh, read your book. Uh, all right. That lamp on the end table is about six inches too far away. It throws a shadow. Hmm. Yes, you're right. The table should be over further to the left. Uh, uh-huh. All right if you lean forward. Well, let's try it. What? I'm moving the end table over six inches. Now? Why not? Okay. Which way? Your left. There? He wa- <laughs> well, of uh. course he does. What else do you expect from hmm. an adolescent? Uh-uh. 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 Shall I move it back? Oh, no, no, no. The end table's all right. That's good. The couch is off center. Now, Liz, you're not going to start moving the couch tonight. Well, it's only six inches. Okay. Okay. Well, then he asked me if I thought a sweater was too personal a present for a girl. Say when. Well, I told him it depended on the girl. <laughs> mm-hmm. This couch is upholstered in foam lead. There, there. That's right. Say, is it hot in here? No, not very. Huh. You mean move it back? No, it isn't the couch. It's the picture. It's off balance. Well, I like it that way. It's unusual. An asymmetrical composition. Off balance. Oh, darling, you don't want to move it now. We can't bang on the wall at this hour. Just try it, dear. Oh. I just kept my big mouth shut. Well, I'm going to wear my new manager pants. Oh, you saw them. I know they do. They're supposed to. I'll just have to be careful. Hold it a little higher, Ben. There. All right? Fine. I didn't realize the walls were that dirty. They're not dirty. They're they're just aged. Ben, do you like stark white? Stark white what? Walls. Well, I've never given them much thought. Bye now. Say, what's going on in here? Oh, it all started in a moment of insanity when I remarked that the lamp was six inches too far away. It was devastating, even catastrophic. I could die. I could just die. Oh, Daddy. I'm sorry. I moved the lamp before supper when I was knitting. I see you moved it back where it was in the first place. You mean it's all a mistake? We can move everything back? Just forget the whole thing? Um, Ben. Hmm? Uh, think about stark white. <laughs> I thought about stark white all the next day, and by evening when I arrived home, I was slightly snowblind. Outside the apartment door, I caught a strange aroma. Wasn't anything cooking, but it was vaguely familiar. It's turpentine, dear. I was thinning the paint. What paint? The white. It wasn't stark enough. What is that you're wearing? A pup tent? Coveralls. It's the ceiling that's the hard part. 
You're not painting the ceiling. Uh Uh-huh. It's easy. You use a roller. Liz, this is crazy. For one thing, the landlord's supposed to paint. It's in the sanitary code. I'm not going to wait for you to sue him and carry the case up to the Supreme Court. But it's a matter of principle. You know, this is a fight to the finish. All right. I surrender. I want the walls clean. Now, Ben, I've got to get Pete off to bed early. They're bringing the machine at 6.30. What machine? The floor scraper. But I don't know anything about floor scraping. Oh, that's all right, dear. I do. Oh, well, then I suppose it's a good idea. And then, uh, don't worry about helping with the painting. I don't want to upset you at all. Thank you, dear. I know you're busy all day, so I won't bother you. Thank you, dear. Besides, the, the rubber base paint looks awful unless you know what you're doing. <laughs> Liz spent the whole evening on a ladder with white paint running down her arm into her sleeve as she painted the ceiling. I tried to be helpful, handing her brushes and rags, but she sent me into the kitchen about nine o'clock to think about charcoal gray for the bathroom. I considered charcoal gray seriously until 10.30, and then I went to bed. I could tell when Liz finally turned in at midnight because of the delicate scent of turpentine that she wafted in with her. The next day, I called her from the office at about three in the afternoon. Ben, if you've got a few minutes this afternoon, think about apple green for the bedroom. Yes, dear, I'll put one of the law clerks onto it. I pulled the fixtures off the wall in the dinette. How did it happen? Were you hurt? No, no, I did it on purpose. I'm putting in indirect lighting. Oh. Look, Liz, uh, I've got a brief to get out tonight. It is? Well, I guess I better stay down here tonight. Don't come home before midnight. Midnight? Why not? I varnished the floor inside the front door. An office building's a strange place at night. As lonely as a country graveyard, with the strange cries of the cleaning ladies echoing through the empty halls. I worked on Slattery versus the incorporated village of Tarrytown until about 11, and then I decided to knock off. As I went out, I noticed that there was a light on in an office down at the end of the hall. I went over to the elevator and punched the down button. The light went out down the hall, and the door opened. It was a girl, young girl, sort of small, with a scotch plaid coat pulled in tight at the waist. I glanced sideways at her and then studied the elevator indicator over the door. It stayed glued to the B at the bottom of the dial. We just stood and waited for a while. You don't get irritated when you wait, do you? I I beg your pardon? I get absolutely furious when I have to wait for an elevator, as if it were staying down purposely because it's me. You don't. I was watching you. Oh, No, I suppose I don't. Charlie's probably mopping up one of the floors. I never would have thought of that. You're in the law firm down the hall, aren't you? Yes, 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 I am. Can a landlord evict a tenant for sharing the apartment with a girlfriend? Well, uh, what kind of tenant? Me. (laughs) I'd have to see the lease. Here comes the elevator. Oh, it's because you're here. If it was only me, it wouldn't come for ages. Something personal between you and Charlie? (laughs) No, no, it's the elevator. It's easier waiting with someone. Go ahead. Thank you. You saved me hours. Well, good night. Good night. I I guess we're going the same way. <laughs> I guess so. I I was going at the drugstore for a cup of coffee. So was I. Well, after you. Thanks. Well, good night. Good night. I climbed up on a stool at one end of the counter and she perched at the other end. I fiddled with a napkin and looked through the papers I was carrying, trying not to stare at her. She was a striking girl. Her hair was very long and sort of rippled down her back. She smiled at me and I turned away as if I'd been caught stealing the jam pot. 
Well, what'll it be, Chief? Uh, coffee, please. Black. Mm-hmm. Anything else? A sandwich? Hamburger? Yeah. Just coffee. Uh-huh. One cup of your milk. Here you are. Thank you. Uh, pretty girl, huh? Hmm. Oh, I suppose so. Yeah, she has a fresh, white-eyed beauty. <laughs> yeah, I guess she has. You came in together, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, we did. What does that mean? Well, there she is at that end, and here you are way down here. Well, what's wrong with the arrangement? Look, leaning on a counter all night, you get to learn about life, you know. You get to know people, the little people. I've had this situation before. What situation? Well, you know, late at night, boy and a girl come in, afraid of tearing her eye. They sit down. Now, see? wait a minute. You've got this whole wrong. Yeah, but they're worlds I... apart. See, they've quarreled. Look, I don't know the girl. I hardly speak to her. You should be ashamed. She wouldn't discard you that way like an old shoe. If it's okay with you, all I want is a cup of coffee. No philosophy, eh? Oh, well, you heard about me, huh? Are you famous? Oh, sure. I've been in the newspapers. Archie, the short order Socrates. I got the clipping right here. Well, <laughs> that's very interesting. Hey, you want to read what Waller Intro wrote about me? Uh, not particularly. Oh. Well, how about Earl Wilson? I got a real great write-up from Earl Wilson. Sure. All I wanted was the coffee. Oh. Hey, look, I'll tell you you're sorry. Never hey, mind, yeah, I'll tell please. you you want to apologize. Look, it's I, all I, right. Now, just you've got it all wrong. wrong. I can... uh, excuse me, miss. Hey, he, they miss, he's sorry. He wants to sit next to you. I do not. I mean... I, mean, uh, I think he's very understanding. It was a silly quarrel, darling. Please sit next to me. What was that? <laughs> there, ain't that better? Here, I'll bring you coffee down here, Chief. Look, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, come this, this on, is... come on. Don't disappoint him. He feels so philanthropic bringing two lovers together again. <laughs> it seems that he, he feels that he has to live up to his press notices. Oh, are they reviewing drugstores now? Apparently. Atkinson in the Times said that he had a deft hand with a hamburger, but uh, his malted's bogged down in the second act. <laughs> well, here's your coffee, huh? Say, do you mind if I mention this little vignette to Ed Sullivan if he comes in? Not at all. Just spell my name right. Smith, with an I. Smith, with an I, sure. Well, I'll leave you two alone now. <laughs> well, hello, Mr. Smith. I'm really Marriott. Ben Marriott. With two T's. Oh, I'm Judy Cantor. I do layouts for the Fountain Pen Company. Do you think I should give it up? I don't know. Why? I should be spending all my time studying. I took the job because I thought I could save up enough to go to Paris. Do you think I ought to keep up or just accept fountain pen layouts? I don't know. I suppose it depends on how strongly you want to... Well, whatever it is you want. He, you know... Nobody's ever put it that clearly before. <laughs> <laughs> I think studying art is just an excuse that gets people to Paris. And then they go back home again, never quite satisfied with, uh, well, wherever it was they came from. Oh, well, you've been there? Just during the war. Even then, with hungry kids and black marketing, there was, oh, a sense of life, of gaiety, a wonderful, astonishing, <laughs> well, whatever it was, I hated to leave. Oh. I really ought to be going home. No, no, let me take care of it. Oh, thank you. Well, I... I suppose we should walk out arm in arm or the counterman will be heartbroken. Oh. Get something? Yes. Neosinephrine drops. My son has a stuffed nose. I came up for air on the subway going home. There was a strange, disturbing quality about that girl. She looked straight in your eye with a look of absorbed interest. Of course, she might have been nearsighted and too vain to wear her glasses, but that didn't occur to me at the time. I started to tell Liz about the short order Socrates, but I didn't get very far. Did you think about apple green? I only had a few minutes during supper, darling, but mm. I thought about it very hard. I don't like it. I think elephant gray. Liz, a funny thing happened to me tonight. I ran into a girl waiting for the elevator. Very odd girl. I can't quite figure her out. Well, that's I... nice, dear. Uh, hand me that rag. The enamel drips on the floor. You see, 
I was working late, and the elevator took a long time coming up. Uh, ben, I... Ben, do you mind telling me later? I've got to concentrate. If I drip white enamel on the gray wall, I'll never get it off. Okay. Okay. Don't be sulky. I'm not sulky. I'm tired. Oh, that's nice. Oh, oh, it almost dripped. Uh, go to bed, dear. You can tell me about the funny thing in the morning. Somehow, it didn't seem so funny in the morning. I was late, and I'd have had to tell the whole story to Liz from the beginning. And she was obviously thinking about, I don't know, eggshell off-white or something. So I didn't say anything. Slattery versus the incorporated village of Tarrytown turned out to be more work than I expected. And I had to work late at the office for the rest of the week. Wednesday and Thursday nights, I ran into Judy Cantor at the elevator. We stopped at the drugstore each night for coffee. Friday night, I finished work early, but I just sat around for a while thinking. I suppose it was the sound of the elevator coming up that brought me out of it. At least, that's what I told myself at the time. She was just getting in the car when I came out into the hall. Down! Down! Hello. Hello, Ben. Funny thing. I was through with my work 20 minutes ago, but I just sat at my desk daydreaming. So did I. But I I didn't hear your door, so I started home anyway. We didn't want coffee that night, so we walked across the little park triangle to the subway. It was a lovely, clear night. One of those cold, crisp nights with no wind blowing so you could stop and just breathe it in. I was pointing out Orion to her. Ooh. What is it? Caught my heel. Ooh. Are you all right? My ankle twisted a little. Here, sit down on the bench. No, no, it's all right. Go ahead, sit down. Ooh. It'll be all right soon. Are you sure? Boy. Mm. It's like drinking ice water, isn't it? The kind of night that belongs with fir trees on a mountainside. It's out of place hanging over lower Broadway. Mm. Something very, very incandescent about a night like this. (laughs) I'm being foolish, aren't I? (laughs) Oh, don't spoil it. Men are always ashamed of a poetic thought. You, You shouldn't be. Well... Certainly is a marvelous night. I painted this once. I tried to make it look like a cold night. That's hard if you don't cheat and use snow. I wish you could see it. I'd like you to. Oh, I'd like to. Well, I suppose we'd better get going. Uh, Can you walk? It's all right. I'll tell you what. I'll take a cab home, drop you off on the way. Oh, that'd be lovely. Oh, it's no trouble. Here, let me give you a hand. Oh, Well, thank you very much. It does hurt a little. I think it's very nice of you to come up. Oh, well, only because it's a walk-up. I was afraid of that ankle. It's all right now. Well, here we are. I'm 2C. Yeah. Well... I, uh, I finished that case I was working on. I knew you would. I guess I won't be working nights for a while. Well, it it was nice just knowing there was somebody else on the floor. Did seem more friendly, didn't it? Uh, won't you come inside? Well, it's, uh, pretty late. Oh, I'd like you to see my work. I I want to know what you think of it. I I shouldn't, Judy. Oh, it's all right, really. Judy? Oh, my roommate's here. Hey, Sherry, are you dressed? You've got company. You're crying out loud. Wait a minute. Okay. Come on. Uh, this is my roommate, Sherry. Hiya. Come on in. How'd you do? Uh, maybe I'd better go. Oh, oh no, no. Please come in. It's all right. Hey, Judy, he called. Oh, Sid, what do you say about Alice? Oh, you know Alice. Oh, that makes two boys I've got for the dance. What can I tell them? I'll just die. It's catastrophic, all right. It's murder, the worst. Uh... 
Maybe I better be going on. It's a little late, you know. Oh, that's all right. The boys are always saying late. It's okay as long as we're both here. Well, unlike the other boys, I should be getting home. Uh, very nice to meet you, Miss... Uh... Oh, 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 wait a minute, Ben. Sherry, this is the one I was talking about. The lawyer. Oh, I'll get it out of the drawer. Uh, I beg your pardon? The lead. I, I knew you wouldn't mind, Ben. I, you see, I... I rented the room, and now the landlord says I can't have Sherry here. He says there's something in the lease about subletting. Oh. Oh, it's something about a lease, eh? Mm. Oh, I, I thought you wouldn't mind. You're the only lawyer I knew. I see. Well, sure, I'll look over the lease. Here it is. Ben... I just don't understand these things. If I can't have Sherry here, I won't be able to make the ready. It's devastating. I'll just die. I'll absolutely die. I looked at the lease. It was devastating and catastrophic. I rendered the opinion that the landlord was right and fled. She stood in the doorway and waved to me as I went down the stairs. She was pretty, pretty and graceful, her long hair all tangled. But I went down those stairs two at a time, pursued by the echo of the giggles and the horrible quality of unadulterated youth. On the subway, going home, I held a particularly painful session of self-analysis. When I got home, I found Liz waiting up for me. The painting was done, the paint-stained coveralls were gone. Well... How do you like it, darling? Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, I, I meant the walls. Oh, well, they're beautiful, too. You had a rough time this week, I'm afraid. In a way. You know, darling, even with the paint and the varnish and the turpentine, I miss you. I miss you, too. I think I know how much I miss you now. Well, it's all over. Yes, you're right, it is. You have no idea how glad I am to get home. It's nice to have you. Recognize what I'm wearing? Your birthday, last uh -huh. year. You never wore it before. I was waiting for an occasion. <laughs> Sit down, darling, I'll get you some coffee. No, no, no. No, you just stay right here. <laughs> I suppose I feel guilty neglecting you this week. Well, I feel a little guilty myself. Tell me, how was your week? Anything interesting happen? Well, hmm. Anything important? No. No, oh no, nothing important. Oh, that's too bad. Hmm. Comfortable, darling? Very comfortable. Ben and Liz Marriott will be back in a moment. In the meantime, let us extend an invitation on behalf of our stars, Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin, as well as the National Broadcasting Company, to all of you to drop by next week at this time for another half-hour observation and transcription of The Marriage, written by Ernest Canoy. Denise Alexander played Emily, and Sargent was heard as Judy, Larry Haynes as Archie, and Sherita Bauer as Sherry. The Marriage is an NBC Radio Network production directed by Edward King. This is Bob Denton speaking. The bureau is about six inches too far to the right. Is it now? I know just what to do, darling. You do? Yeah. I'll saw it off. <laughs> Good night, Liz. Good night, darling. Tonight, here, meet the press on the NBC radio network.